walking around, feeling free, thinking about what's happened to me from July up till now. Don't know where. Don't know how. All right. Hello, party people. Today, I have an appetizer extravaganza, holiday edition. I'm like drooling already, gotta wipe it away. So, I was going through my list of things to make for Christmas, and I had about 70 appetizers. And I thought, well, I don't know which one is the best. What should I bring to Christmas? There's so many to choose from. So I narrowed it down, I think I have 10. So we're gonna make them all today and then I'll make my favorites again for Christmas. So basically what I'm telling you is tonight for dinner, my family is having a bunch of appetizers. Plus appetizers are pretty much everyone's favorite part of Christmas. Am I right? No, that's a lie. But a close fifth, I would say. Okay, so what are we making? The big question. I actually, oh, go on. <sighs> I tried to catch him. Alex just left with my notebook. I left it in the car, went grocery shopping this morning. Which, by the way, if you want to make Christmas appetizers, really the only three ingredients you need are crescent rolls, which I got an abundance of, cheese, which I got an abundance of, and herbs, which I got an abundance of. You don't need anything else. <laughs> Again, that's a lie. You need a little bit of skill in the kitchen. But for real, I don't think I've ever spent that much time in the cheese section. Okay, so what we're going to make today, loaded potato bombs, yes, crescent pinwheel spinach thing I don't have a name for, slow cooker candy pecans, delicious, crescent roll wreath, cranberry meatballs, maple pecan smokies, crab artichoke dip, cheesy bacon spinach dip, pull apart Christmas tree, sausage balls, snowman cheese balls, I mean bites, and a cheese snowman for everyone's delight. That is a lot of stuff. What should we start with? Oh wait, did I say crab artichoke dip? I never bought crab before. That was an experience. Wait, did I say Parmesan crusted Brussels sprouts? I didn't, but I printed out the recipe. <laughs> so there's a lot going on. I have about two hours to whip all of this together. So let's get started. So random, but I just got deja vu getting the meatballs out of the freezer. I have deja vu all the time and I can't figure out if I have deja vu right before something good happens or right before something bad happens. I should probably start writing it down. Also, why do we get deja vu? You know what I mean? Have you looked into the conspiracy theories surrounding deja vu? I'm just saying. The mind is a crazy thing. Oh! <laughs> Okay, hold on. I also wanted to mention a couple other things. Oh my gosh, the workout, just getting my crack pots out. Got it. Why do I need two crock pots? Surely I need more than one. What were we talking about? <laughs> Deja vu, the mind is crazy. I don't know. We'll never know. So the recipe for this one actually gives you instructions on how to make meatballs. Please. Who has time for that when they're making Christmas dinner and all that stuff? So I got frozen meatballs, but we can call this semi-homemade. Into the crock pot is one jar can of cranberry sauce. That's natural. So you're most likely familiar with these meatballs because uh, people make them all the time with grape jelly. Do you see this? There's something so fascinating about this. Don't you think? <laughs> I don't know, I think it's pretty cool. In trying to make this recipe a little more festive, I thought instead of grape jelly, we'll try the cranberry sauce. And then you normally put in, some people use, I don't some kind of chili sauce? I don't know, but I'm going with the best barbecue sauce on the face of the earth, Sweet Baby Ray's. I think you put this entire container in. Sounds about right. And then you just mix everything together and add some meatballs. I'm telling you, it seems so wrong, but it is such a crowd pleaser. Well, I mean, I don't know with the cranberry sauce. I've never tried it before, so I will give you my opinion on that. Oh wait, and the recipe says uh, chili powder. I don't know why. Oh, dang it. That's my life. I guess I'll add a little bit. Oh, too much. Also my life. All right. Whatever, give this a good mix. Pop a top on it, you're good to go. Super simple recipe. And that's what we want, right? Out of an appetizer. 
We don't want to be spending all day making a dumb appetizer. Moving on to another crowd pleaser, but I figured this would be an easier way to do it than throwing it in your oven. Oh, what are we making? Candied pecans. Yo guys, this is such a holiday staple for us. Uh, and uh, I made out my grocery list. I thought surely I have pecans in my freezer, which I do, but I don't have enough. So the recipe calls for six. I'm gonna see if I can half it and do three cups a one. Oh yeah, we got three cups for sure. We got three and then some to spare. Oh, pecans. And really? Kim, you animal. Three second rule. Who doesn't love a good pecan? I don't know why I threw them in there. I actually need them in this Ziploc bag. I don't know what I said the last 30 seconds. What I wanted to say was, you don't need more than three cups. Three cups is perfect, unless you're making them for a ton of people. But since I'm making about 85 appetizers today, three cups is plenty. You need brown sugar, white sugar, vanilla, cinnamon, or pumpkin pie spice if that's your thing, clove if you want to add it. What's another one? Allspice if you're into it, salt. Christmas bowl somewhere. BRB. Oh yes. Now I'm feeling festive. I've been waiting to use this all season long. It's the holiday season. So we're going to combine two egg whites like a pro. You can keep the yolks if you're making an omelet for Christmas morning. I usually keep the yolks and then they just go bad sitting in my fridge. At least I try. And a little bit of vanilla goes in with the egg whites. And we're just gonna whisk the egg whites until they're frothy. So just, I don't know, a little bit. It doesn't take much effort. No need to get your KitchenAid out for this step. Say hello to your muscles. That's about good, okay? We're not trying to do anything crazy. Now you add the pecans to this mixture. And I am not exactly following the recipe because I make these every year uh, in the oven, so I'm kind of following my recipe, but also kind of following there. I mean, that's really what I always do, right? Do my own thing, use a recipe as a guideline. I should probably get something better than this. Here we go. All right, give this a nice mix until all the pecans are coated in the egg whites. Oh my gosh, I halved the pecans but I didn't have the egg whites. Well, there's where I messed up. It doesn't matter, it'll be great. Welcome to my kitchen. I basically mess everything up, yet somehow everything turns out just fine. Half a cup of sugar, quarter cup of brown sugar, a dash of cinnamon, any other spices you wanna add. You know how candied pecans are like a million dollars when you see them at a fair or in the mall or wherever you are buying candied pecans? After you make this, you're never going to understand why they're so expensive. I mean, I guess pecans just in general are expensive, but $14 for like a little handful is a bit much. Do you feel me? Okay, now you're going to put your pecans into the sugar mixture. Is that enough cinnamon? Oh yeah, it smells good. Gotta love a good pour spout. Seal up the bag and then just give these a good zhuzh. So simple. The recipe says to do that like in layers in your crock pot and that just seems like a waste of my time. I don't have spare time, okay? I don't know about you, but it's gonna be a no for me, dog. Spray your crock pot with some non-stick cooking spray and then dump them in. You're supposed to stir this every 30 minutes. Is actually the same instructions as if you were to make it in your oven. Low for three hours. Oh no, I'm cleaning up and realized I forgot to add salt. It'll be fine. Okay, I think we're a little tidied up over here. One reason that I really like appetizers is because they're savory most of the time. I mean, the pecans have sugar and stuff in them, but most of, I think all the other recipes are savory. And I'm the type of person who loves desserts. I also happen to love savory things. Two down, 94 to go. Okay, I printed out recipes for two dips. We'll make that and then we'll make like a crescent roll thing that I used to make in college all the time or maybe even in high school because it's so delicious. Crowd, another crowd, these are all crowd pleasers, I think. I don't know, I've never made the dip. So let's make the cheesy bacon spinach dip, except for I don't have enough bacon. All right, hold on, maybe I do. Cheesy ba okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's make the crab artichoke spinach dip. I need some water. Don't forget to hydrate. Take care of yourself. Purifies the soul. I am not a big seafood shopper. I was in the seafood section for way too long trying to look for lump 
crab meat. I have to see. It's never just one. I don't know what lump crab meat is. I finally found this imitation crab flakes. I don't know. It sounded good enough for me. Lump crab meat. Also like the imitation thing. What does that mean? Does that mean it's fake? It's semi alarming, but also I don't care enough to do anything else about it. All right, well, what do we do? I don't know. Preheat oven. Oh, jeez. Success. Cream cheese, mayonnaise, cheese. Oh Lord, cheese and cheese and cheese. All right, what do we need? Cream cheese, mayonnaise, Monterey Jack cheese, which I have no idea what this kind of cheese is. How do they make cheese taste different? I don't, I don't know, I don't have the answers. They're all made from cow's milk, am I wrong? Except for like feta cheese, goat cheese, that kind of thing. I don't, Monterey Jack is apparently what you need for this recipe. Oh, Parmesan, freshly grated. Oh no, oh no, I don't have something. Happens every time. This is what happens when you don't make an extensive grocery list. No, I don't have it for real. I'm kidding, nope. I'm pretty sure I have it. I have to have it somewhere. Come on, Kim, don't let me down. Don't let me down. Oh no, oh no. Dishonor, dishonor on me. Dishonor on my family. No, please, say it ain't so. All right, well, we don't have Worcestershire sauce. Oh man, I know we have some, I know we do. Oh, you guys, send help. We don't have it. We don't have it anywhere. We don't need it. <laughs> Did I ever tell you what I forgot to tell you earlier? Because I remembered, but now I don't remember if I told you. <laughs> you guys, can't be that important. One block of cream cheese straight in here. We need one cup of mayonnaise, and this just seems, oh, excessive. This is more mayonnaise than I go through in an entire year. Right in. Bon appetit. Okay, one cup of Monterey Jack. I would normally just eyeball it with my hands, but it doesn't matter. I figured, well, this is already dirty. Half a cup of freshly grated Parmesan. Good. You know what else we need for this recipe? You know what goes great with crab? What everyone talks about. Artichokes. Is that the name of this recipe? Oh, it is. Crab artichoke dip. Well, we knew it was coming, or at least you did. Just dice this up. I have to say, this is my first time using artichokes from a can. Not sure I'm a fan. I normally get them in a jar. Perfect. I will also say that in a jar, they do not sell 14 ounces. They have like, I don't know, eight ounces and then 10 ounces. And then I think maybe 16, but not 14. Just if you're curious. Okay, all of that goes in. Two cloves of garlic. <laughs> oh man, we gotta cut some more stuff up. We need green onions. Step one to this recipe should be mise en place. So just two green onions, thinly sliced. You want in on this action? Here we go. Now you can see my knife skills hard at work. I went to school to learn this, okay? That's a lie, I didn't. If you consider watching Rachel Ray 30 Minute Meals School, then absolutely, that's the truth. Green onions, go right in. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and the main attraction, this weird crab meat. Should I cut this up? Oh no, it kind of just falls apart in your hand, huh? Ooh, this is weird. What's it taste like? Rubber, it tastes like rubber. Oh my gosh, what? Is this real food? What's in here? Oh, do people eat this? Well, this is uh, special. 12 ounces, but I have 16. I have no plans to do anything with the leftover lump meat, so I'm just putting it all in there. Give this a really good mix. There we go. Also, I really scored because the crab meat was buy one, get one free. Ooh, it does look festive and pretty though, doesn't it? I was gonna add teriyaki sauce instead of Worcestershire sauce, but Worcestershire sauce is so deep and flavorful, teriyaki doesn't even touch it, so I'm not gonna add it. Okay, so everything is pretty weird together, but I do have a feeling this is gonna be 
delicious. Okay, I really hope this is going to be the star of the show because I got this new fancy serving dish, baking dish. Look at this. That's nice. Got it from Home Goods. We're gonna bake this in the oven at 425 for 15 minutes. I mean, how can it not be fancy, right? Crab meat. We just won't tell anyone it's imitation. Will you keep the secret? I'm trusting you. Look how nice that dish is. That's nice. That's what Christmas is all about, right? Using your nice dishes. <laughs> I really wanna make the um, sausage balls, mostly because I want to eat the sausage balls. I don't know if I printed out the recipe. Huh, I gotta go get it. A few of my recipes didn't print out, so we're also making sausage balls. I don't know if I told you that in the beginning, but we're also making anti-pasto squares and then cranberry brie stuff that we're probably going to make for a Christmas video. Well, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. I do know right now we're going to make sausage balls. You just need sausage, bisquick, cheese, and parsley, I think. Salt and pepper. You also need paprika. I can't find mine. Oh, there it is. It was in the last place I looked. Okay, oven to 350. Into the bowl goes one pound of sausage. Ooh, one tablespoon of paprika. Okay. Two cups of Bisquick. I bet any pancake mix would work with this. So work with what you have if you don't have Bisquick. Four cups of cheddar cheese. Lord. I mean, are these sausage balls at this point? They should just be called cheese balls with a little bit of sausage. Four cups, going in. Oh no, was I supposed to cook the sausage? Uh-uh, no, no I wasn't. Okay, good to go. We do need some parsley. Two tablespoons of it. Fresh herbs make everything taste better. Just try it. But if you don't have fresh herbs, just use the stuff in the jar. I will say parsley is probably my least favorite herb but I think it'll complement the sausage really well. It just smells like grass. Okay, two tablespoons. That's about right. It looks good. See that? Guess we're just gonna mix it. I'm just gonna use my two favorite tools. I mean, there's no liquid in here. Am I missing something? This is supposed to be an egg or something? Nope, this is it. I don't know if I trust this recipe now. Who wrote it? Lindsay Funston. I don't know, Lindsay. Looking kind of dry. I'm doing my best over here. Maybe this is when my KitchenAid would have come in handy. What in the heck? This is just getting out of hand. My knuckles are really hurting, scraping against the bowl. So I'm just gonna take it back, old school style. Just like knead it in. I mean, this is, there has to be something I'm missing. But that's it, that's all it says. Oh, it's so dry. I mean, I get it. Once the sausage cooks, it's gonna let out its fat, but Gosh, this is kind of ridiculous. Okay, I'm getting it. I put it off for far too long. I'm just going to dump it in my KitchenAid. I spent $300 on this thing for a reason. Before and after. Highly recommend throwing it in a machine. Unless you actually have muscles, in which case, use them. Next step is to roll them into balls. process it wasn't too bad it took me 12 minutes to roll all the balls out and I will say the consistency is like dry play-doh so bizarre hopefully they're delicious and it's worth all the effort into the oven at 350 for 25 minutes speaking of the oven our crab artichoke dip just came out 
Uh, it is piping hot, so I'm not gonna try it right away. I will say the recipe said to pair it with some of these fancy bread dippers. I don't know what they're called, crostinis maybe? Oh, bruschetta, garlic and herb. I don't know, I just found these in the grocery store. The recipe actually says to make them yourself out of like a baguette and well, you know, have we met? I'm not putting in that much effort, especially for a Christmas appetizer. I just wanna get things in people's bellies, so I think this is a great option if you want minimal effort. It's like semi-homemade, you know? That was such a good show. Does anyone remember that show? Okay, our kitchen is starting to get a little messy. Begging for you to take my hand, wreck my plans. And to pasta squares. Okie doke. So I am gonna share with you the recipe I used to make for well, recipe I we need to finish. We need to take that out later. Another crowd pleaser, and I'm actually, I couldn't remember what kind of cream cheese you need for this recipe. I think it'll be great with uh, really anything. Chive and onion would be a great option. I think I used to use vegetable, what is this? Garden vegetable, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, I have, you can use crescent dough. It's not my favorite dough, to be honest with you, and I will say, oh, there's thyme all over the floor. Great. Aw oh, man, I'm really kicking myself for throwing away all my baking sheets. All right, we'll do this. I feel like the holiday season, everyone buys these Pillsbury rolls so much more than they do any other time of year. And if I would have thought about that, I would have probably bought stock in Pillsbury. You know what I mean? Speaking of stock, oh my gosh, if you're into it. Have you seen Pinterest stock? I'm just saying. Subscribe for more insider tips on uh, stock broking. Just kidding. Okay, what am I doing with this? I don't know. I guess I'll just lay it right here. So instead of the crescent rolls for this one, I saw that they sell just a crescent dough sheet. So it's the same texture, it's the same flavor. They just sell it in a sheet so you don't have to pinch together the seams. And that is just genius. When did they come up with this idea? And they should have done it earlier because I remember that being the most painful part of this recipe is getting everything to stick together. I'm trying to like get it to be a little bigger than it is, you know, trying to stretch the dough out a little here. Oh, it is sticking, mother of pearl. Whatever, it'll be fine. So what you do, oh, let me stir the pecans. Oh yeah, looking good. So the cream cheese mixture, you just plop right on there and then you Spread it out. Does not have to be perfect. This has been sitting in room temperature for a while. I think you used the whole container, I guess. I didn't know that. I forgot. It has been many, many years. And then what makes this recipe fantastic, also makes you think you're eating something healthy, is that it has spinach in it. So you just take the spinach leaves and you put them right over top. So in high school, I literally would sit here and like, tear the stem off and lay them next to each other. You guys, I've changed a lot, okay? So just spread out a little bit, no big deal. If you want, you can get baby spinach. Is that what I got? No, that's what I used to get. Not anymore. I think baby spinach is more expensive for whatever reason. So that's looking great. And then you just roll it up. Which way? Let's do this way. That'll give us a few more, because essentially these are like pinwheels, and you're going to cut them. Oh yeah, definitely take the stems off, if you have time to do that. If not, I think it'll be just fine. I'm not doing it. I remember the first time my friend made this recipe, and I was like, wow, you're a cook. You know, you always have that one friend in high school that like cooked for you all the time. That was mostly me, if you can believe that. Okay, perfect. Also, some for the chef. I love spinach. You know what's really good on spinach? A little bit of lemon juice. The problem with this is you cut it after it's cooked. I don't have a pan big enough. Yes, I do. Okay, actually, I'm gonna cut this. Oh my gosh, such an easy appetizer. I can't wait to eat this. It's gonna bring me straight back to hike school. Cool, what's next? Begging for you to take my hand. Now I'm super subconscious. I feel like I have spinach all in my teeth. Would you guys tell me? All clear. Oh, we got so many recipes. Oh. Antipasto squares. Oh, no, no, crap. We forgot something. For the sausage balls, you are supposed to coat them in just a little bit of oil. <laughs> oil, I think that's it, okay. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. Just 
That's fine. Have you guys listened to the new Taylor Swift album? God, can you believe she released two albums in one year? It's like, it is Christmas, you know? Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna spray the bottom of like a nine by 13 dish. And you know what? This one calls for the crescent rolls as well, but I feel like the rollout dough would work better because, ooh, but this is thicker. I don't know. You have to pinch it together is what I'm getting at. I'm not really gonna pinch it together. I think it'll be fine. <sighs> Unless it tears like that. Unbelievable. I also, is this big enough? What? It's not big enough. Well, too bad. Like, I don't have a bigger pan, you know? Did I tell you what we're making? Antipasto squares. It's basically like a mini sandwich. Oh, wait. I got two things of ham. Public sweet ham. This was the ham that was on sale. Let's see which one's better. That's good. Now, public sweet ham. It doesn't get much better than this. I kind of want to save this to eat, so I'm going to put a layer of ham. Is that what we're supposed to do? I don't know. So basically you just layer some meats of your choice. I chose ham and pepperoni because that's what the recipe called for. Actually, I think half a pound of each. Wait, I did get pepperoni. Where did I put it? Maybe I did. I don't know. Ah, uh, here it is. Half a pound of ham, quarter pound of the pet, unless you want it thicker. It's like, you know what I mean? You do what you want. Oh, also, it's supposed to be a little wider than 9 by 13, so who cares? It's whatever. No one's gonna come weigh in your sandwich. One more for the chef. Can you animal? And then we need some cheese. You can use any cheese that you want. I'm using, I don't know what this is, but I have it in my fridge. Colby Jack, perhaps? Monterey Jack? Just throw it on here. It's like a nice creamy cheese. And then because that's not enough cheese, I got some mozzarella cheese, but I also feel like this is for a different recipe. That's okay. A little bit won't hurt. Oh no, what's done? And then this is why I wanted to do this recipe. A pepperoncini. You know what? Hold on. You know what I think would be excellent on this is some olive muffalata. Uh, you could do the pepperoncinis. I'm a big fan of these guys. Ooh, hold on, let me take this out. Oh yeah, the meatballs. Ooh, a spicy meatball. I'm gonna dive into one of these and I read the recipe again. I'm actually not sure if you're supposed to put the parsley in the balls, but I did. I need to empty my dishwasher. It's different. It may benefit from an egg or two. I'm going in for more, so it can't be that bad. I keep going in for more, so if that says anything. You can definitely taste the Bisquick in it. It's interesting. It's nice. I'd eat two. Maybe three. Okie doke. So, like I was saying, I have this muffalata, and I am gonna just... Would that be better on it? I don't. You do what you want. I'm gonna use this. How am I gonna get it out? Oh my word, 16 ounces of this. I'm just gonna throw it right over top. Should I do half mouf and half pepperon? I'll do that. I'll do half and half. That way we can compare and contrast see which one is better. So you know what would be a big time saver? If you, instead of pepperoncinis, buy banana peppers, I'm just saying, I think it'll save you some time. Okay, now we're gonna pop open the other can and top it with some crescents. Now we're just going to brush the top with some oil and then sprinkle with some Italian seasoning, parsley. What does the recipe actually call for? Hold on, let me look. Oregano. And you know what else would be really good? I'll try to shoot it on the screen here. It's like a lessy bread seasoning. So delicious. I am fresh out of it, so I just use good old Italian seasoning. It's not Christmas without it. Oh my gosh, and freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Have you seen the meme that is like, when the waiter says, tell me when, or whatever. I don't know, I'll throw it on the screen, you can laugh. If it was an open shed case. A fourth, a quarter cup of that. That's good, I don't know what I added. Definitely not a quarter cup, maybe I did. Into the oven, 350 for 15 minutes. Oh my goodness, good thing I opened the oven. Things are really moving along here. So these are nice and golden. I did not set a timer, have we met? So um, once they're cooled just a little bit, I mean, are these done? Yeah, just cut them this way, you know? And then boom, you got an appetizer. And eat the rest of that. One, two, three, four, five, Six. 
I would say we're moving right along. Next thing I'm going to make is pretty simple. It's also pretty festive. We have this spinach that's been thawing out. We should probably do something with that. Those are done. Bacon spinach dip, pull apart Christmas tree. Sounds good. And let's make the bacon, what is it called? Bacon spinach dip. I love bacon, I love spinach. I like dip, I guess. Ooh, a block of cream cheese. All right, let's start with that. Mayonnaise again? Is this the same recipe? Garlic powder, paprika, sour cream and mayonnaise, more Parmesan, uh-oh. Every, oh, 10 slices of bacon. I did thaw out some bacon, but I also have this. I'm gonna save these for the potato uh, bombs. Oh, which I really wanna make. Oh. <gasps> 30 minutes, we can do it. One block of cream cheese. La creme. A third cup of mayonnaise. One third cup of sour cream. Teaspoon of garlic powder. Teaspoon of paprika. Oh, I opened the wrong side. No big deal. Ah, here I was thinking I had my life together. Think again, Kim. All right, oh, okay. One pound of frozen chopped spinach. What? Right in there. Oh, I should have drained it. Oh, no, oh, it even says it to drain it. It's okay, it's no big deal, just do it. Now we just mix it together here. I don't know why I'm using the worst spoon to mix with. All right, maybe this spoon will work a little better. There we go. Man, another one down. And I have to tell you, I keep eating those sausage balls. They kind of remind me of my dad's pancakes. Oh no, you know what they remind me of? When my dad would make homemade calzones. That is it, that's it. What are we doing now? I don't, I don't know. Making more food. I think we're doing the pull apart Christmas tree, which, okay, it's like pizza with cheese inside or pizza dough with cheese inside. Nothing fantastic. But there's just something about appetizers looking the part of the theme. You know what I mean? So like Christmassy. Oh, I can barely read this. Basically what we're going to do, hold on, hydrate. Purifies the soul. So every time that I've tried to make little balls of pizza before or calzones or whatever, I always use shredded mozzarella cheese. And can I tell you how big of a mess it makes? A big one. This recipe calls for, what are these called? String cheese, and you just cut them into pieces, and I thought, it's genius. I don't know how many pieces. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Maybe cut them into thirds. That looks, well, I probably should have done fourths. It doesn't matter. And again, to make this super easy on myself, I got pre-made pizza dough. You could also probably use the crescent rolls like we've done for everything else. I'm um, actually probably only going to use half of this. I'm a pro. Almost. Gotta flower the hands. Here we go. We need some, uh, oh, could have been bad. Okay, I don't know why the recipe told me to put flour down. I don't need flour. Where's my rolling pin? Oh, I don't have time to look for it. I don't have time to look. I know it's down there, but I can't find it. Oh, 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 found one. All right, good enough. So roll this out into a square. Okay, whatever, you get my point. And then cut it into squares. And then take your cheese, throw it in the middle, roll it into a ball. And I am going to lay mine on this dish right here that says pizza. I'm gonna make it into the shape of a Christmas tree. Super simple, right? We'll see if mine actually looks like a Christmas tree because all of my pieces are different sizes, <laughs> which is like baking 101. Everything should be similar size, but whatever. It's just Christmas. Have you guys gotten into the Christmas spirit? I feel like it's a little hard for me this year. I said it last year because I had just had a baby and literally everything was hectic, but I think it's just having all four of my kids' birthdays around the same time where it's just hard for me to focus on Christmas because I'm focused on, you know, Christmas and then four birthday parties and our wedding anniversary. So we've got a lot going on. So I feel like this is just going to be how it is and I'm going to have to learn how to navigate 
getting into the Christmas spirit around everyone's birthday, you know? Oh, these are little. <laughs> That's okay. Oh no, what's done? What's done now? It's looking good actually, the tree. I'm gonna give that a couple more minutes and finish off this tree and then we'll be right back. Come on in, come on up, come on over for the merriest time of year. Come on up, come on in, get together for a good time, smile my dear. Come on in, come on up, come on over. We'll be dancing round the tree. So let us have a swinging Christmas just like one, two, three. Now I'm just gonna brush the Christmas tree with a little bit of egg wash, which is just a fancy way of saying one beaten egg with a little bit of water, like a teaspoon or so of water. And this is just gonna give a nice sheen to the pizza balls, make them nice and glossy. Everyone wants to look fancy for Christmas, okay? And then what do you do with the rest of this egg? I guess you just combine it with the two egg yolks we used earlier and you got a nasty omelet. All right, into the oven, 450 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, moving on to the last recipe I'm gonna share with you guys today. I'm cooking up some bacon back here. It looks done. How does that look? Not done. Okay, this is the recipe I'm most excited about. No, I don't wanna wash this bowl again. But I must. We just appreciate the dedication and how many times I've washed this bowl out. Couple things you need. Oh, okay. You need mashed potatoes. Oh, well, we're making loaded mashed potato bombs. Oh, you know what? I bought dough sheets for the antipasto. It's whatever. Okay, we've got it all. I feel like this is going to be so simple to throw together. Oh wait, we need a muffin tin. I'm just gonna spray the muffin tin with the nonstick stuff. Inhale all those fumes. So the recipe calls for mashed potatoes. I don't have mashed potatoes, so I bought some pre-made mashed potatoes. And then I saw in the grocery store, they have pre-made loaded mashed potatoes. So I thought this is gonna be extra loaded. Need one cup of this. So, I don't know, half a container, I would say. Maybe a little more, why not? Quarter cup of chive and onion cream cheese. And you know what I was thinking? I have some Borsan, like the fancy cheese that you put out on charcuterie. A quarter cup of this. I'm gonna do a little more, because it's my kitchen. I do what I want. Let's get some salt and pepper. And then bacon. I don't even know how much. Oh, you know what? It says two <laughs> tablespoons of bacon. Well, you know what? I have, oh, it's hot. Oh, it's so hot. How do I do it? Just one scoop at a time. I have way more than two tablespoons of bacon. But it also calls for ham. I don't have ham. I'm also not a huge fan of ham. I know bacon and ham is like the same thing basically, but it's not. There we go, some for the chef. Oh, so hot. Is that it? No. Quarter cup of cheddar cheese. I just have this Mexican blend, so in it goes. Ooh, you guys. I'm so excited about this one. I love mashed potatoes. Put it in appetizer form and I am there. Oh, do we also add green onion to this? I feel like that would be a great addition. No time. I'm rushing because uh, my family and I were going to a roller skating rink <laughs> with a couple of our friends. You heard me right. You heard me right. A roller skating party. Okay, again, we're using these crescent rolls. I'm just going to, hold on, this is what. 
I'm just gonna roll this out and then cut it into 24 squares. We'll see if that actually happens. And then, well, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. We need 24 squares, 12 on each side in the middle. Six, nine, 12. Three, six, nine, 12. Oh, these are perfect lines. They're not, not even close. So here they are, uh, before they're cooked, obviously. And I did fill them a lot. I'm not sure exactly how much you're supposed to fill them, but since I eyeballed the recipe, I mean, there's like no filling left. And I did wanna make sure that, you know, you don't wanna get an appetizer that's like a crescent roll, you know? By the way, our Christmas tree is done. Look how festive. Uh, it's actually not finished, but it is done cooking. So let's finish the process. So to finish this Christmas tree, we're gonna top it with something delicious, butter and Parmesan cheese and some herbs. I'm not sure what kind. So we're gonna melt our butter. Oh, wow. You know what's funny? I wrote down I needed basil. Oh, I need to melt this. So I grabbed this much basil. I need one tablespoon. This is crazy. These are really big basil leaves. Look at this. The size of half my face. It's huge. One tablespoon of basil. I feel like such a chef when I chop herbs. Ooh, I get a little hint of licorice. What is wrong? I don't need basil a lot. I do like rosemary. This is not rosemary, it's thyme. Wait, is it rosemary? I always call it thyme, but it's rosemary. Just a couple of rosemary leaves. Ooh, yeah, I, oh, I love rosemary. Kinda smells like soap. Okay, okay, basil, rosemary, and parsley. Good herbs over here. Make everything nice and bright. So our herbs go into our butter, along with a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. I need to empty our dishwasher out. I'm using like all of our baby utensils. Oh, was I supposed to do that? Oh, dang it, I don't know. Brush egg wash, brush on baked pizza, yep. I mean, I guess I added way too much cheese. It says to brush it on the pizza, but it's like a paste, this. It's fine, we're fine. Oh my, hold on. I think once the heat gets to it, it'll spread out a little bit. I could be wrong. Ooh, okay, it looks good. Hold me close, it's on it down. Look at this. Okay, if you serve this at your family holiday. I think they're gonna be impressed, I really do. They're gonna be like, mom, you made this? My kids always get a kick out of when I make, you know, cutesy little things like this. Okay, this is a lot of topping. Plus, who doesn't love pizza? If you are extra cutesy and have extra time on your hands and you're not making 75 appetizers at one time like I am today, maybe get like a cute little star for the top that would be a nice little touch. Ah, I love it, fantastic. That is so festive and beautiful and most importantly, easy. Okay, I did not show you this. Oh, I actually don't think you're supposed to cut it on there, hold on. Okay, can we appreciate my presentation? <laughs> so I just cut them, they look less like pinwheels and more like, I don't know, delicious crescent rolls stuffed with spinach and cream cheese. Let me give you a taste test, delicious. These are my husband's absolute favorite. At least they were when we were like 20 years old. We'll have to see if he still appreciates it. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. What? These were so fast. By the time it took me to like tidy up my kitchen a little bit, I checked the oven and they're done. Oh, they smell incredible. I cannot wait to eat one. I'm just gonna transfer it to a nice fancy Christmas platter.
This may be the hardest part. Oh, look at that, popped right out. Ooh. Okay, yeah, all right, these pop right out. Cool beans, cool beans. Crashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. Over the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on bobtails ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to laugh and sing a sleighing song tonight. Oh, jingle bells. Oh, my word, these look incredible. I cannot wait to devour them. They're way too hot to throw in my mouth right now, but I'll definitely give you a review. Oh, I can't wait. Delicious. These came out really awesome. I was skeptical. I still think, do you think they're better in the oven, Alex? Alex said they taste just as good in the crock pot as they do in the oven. I would probably agree. So Alex is home and we are feasting, trying to decide which one tastes best. Yeah, you try that and tell me what you think. Okay, so now no, really, good. really good, right? That's my favorite actually. So the too. the bacon spinach dip, that's number one for me. Alex likes this one second. And then the crab dip is really good. He likes it. Then the sandwich, then the Christmas tree, then the potatoes. Oh the <laughs> sausage balls. But there's two crock pots behind you. Did you eat the meatball in the crock pot? There's so much food, I know. Also, so many dishes. Oh, and the candied pecans turned out so well. I'm impressed. Couple things I wanna say about the meatballs. One, they're definitely cooked. Do you see that one over there? Two, I would not add the chili powder. It doesn't add anything to the taste, but it smells like chili powder. I don't know, I don't like it. And the cranberry sauce doesn't really add anything either. Doesn't taste like cranberries. Doesn't give like a tartness at all. So there's that, I don't know, just use jelly if it's cheaper. That is it! Oh my gosh, an entire day's worth of cooking. We made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine appetizers. Did I say 10 at the top of this video? I still have like four more to make. I will probably actually make those Christmas morning. Hopefully I'll share the recipes with you. If I don't share them in a video, I will likely share them on my Instagram. So make sure to follow me there if you want to hang out with me even more. But thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out. I hope you enjoyed all the recipes that I shared. If you try them, let me know. I would love to know if you liked them as much as we did. Also, if you want to subscribe, put a little happy in your day and I will see you next time. Bye. All right, time to go roller skating.